uh, Marcus Imes. He's off of the chat answering all your questions. Out here to show us the EC500 50 taper. Big brother to the EC400 and the, even the EC500 40 taper, right? Exactly. So the 500 obviously refers to the 500 millimeter pallet. And uh, 50 taper, it's the big brother to the 40. Uh, this is a money-making machine with the heavy-duty spindle and uh, the proven design of the redesigned EC400. So, uh, right, you've got the same kind of design improvements we had on there. We've got step, the step column and that sort of thing for more rigidity. Yep, Milton covered a lot of that. Uh, a lot of the, the base is actually the same between all three machines. And uh, so the step column, the improved uh, ribs and casting, uh, the improved, the proven 50 taper spindle design from our other machines. Uh, all integrated and, and part into this of the reason, one. part of the reason it, we kept a compact like that is to achieve what it, I guess is one of the, the smallest footprint EC uh, 50 taper HMCs out there. Yeah, the footprint for this machine is only slightly larger than the EC 400. The tool changer sheet metal is bumped out just a tad, but for the most part, you're getting 50 taper and 500 millimeter capability in almost the same footprint in as an EC 400. Machine, right. So you're really not sacrificing space or anything else to get more capability in your shop if you got bigger parts or heavier cuts you need to do. Right, and we're gonna, we're gonna look at heavy cuts in a second here. Yeah, um, just a little size comparison. Uh, the EC500 has uh, 10 inches more X and five inches more Z. And what that translates to is uh, 22,500 cubic inches of machining area. You compare that to the EC400 is 12,100 cubic inches. So your work zone on this machine is almost twice as big. Roughly double. Yeah. yeah. Impressive. Um, so you, it looks like we got 800 something pounds of pallet on each side. Yeah, 840 pounds per, or, sorry, 880 pounds per pallet, which is a pretty beefy, is that 400 kilograms? Yeah. 400 kilograms? About, I yeah. suppose. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, you can see, if you come around the side here, we have a couple big tombstones in there. So this machine was designed with, you know, bigger parts, big tombstones. You want to look at the front, the front side of it now? And then, yeah. Okay, Sal, follow us around here and we'll... If you want to uh, come over, the load station is very similar to the VC400. Maybe just a little bit just bigger. bigger. <laughs> yeah. Very similar, but bigger. You got the uh, pallet ready button, so the spindle never needs to shut down. Uh, It'll just keep pallet changing as long as you hit that ready button and reload the pallet. So uh, that's in, one of the things. In terms that, of uh, indexing the pallet, it works similarly, right? Yeah, same thing here with the uh, index lever. You can uh, get to all sides of the pallet. And you can and once see again, it's only going to lock out when it's in that safe, that safe spot, right? Yep, and when then the if you notice, forward. we have that arrow should point the, to the operator and uh, the machine will only start with the pallet in that position so you can't misload it 180 degrees or something. Right, right. So maybe right. we head back. You see a lot of common components between uh, all the EC models and the new VC as well. So and now, the, now the, the fourth axis drive on this is brand new or it's similar to the EC400 in that it's the cycloidal drive now, right? Yep. We've uh, been having great results from the cycloid drive, and we've now integrated that onto uh, the ECs as well. And so this has the integral fourth axis, so you can get to all uh, four sides of your pallet right there. Right. Uh, that's a big fan with uh, a lot of high production shops, because now you can hit all six sides of the parts in two setups. Right. So obviously- Well, you're using an HMC4, part of, the, part of the reason you're buying an HMC for sure. Exactly. And this is, so that, that cycloidal drive maintains the kind of accuracy we had with the uh, the earlier uh, worm gear style rotaries, but it is more crash resistant, which everyone can appreciate. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, nobody likes screwing up uh, expensive fourth or fifth axis, and uh, some of them can be kind of delicate, but uh, yeah, we've recently transitioned to the cycloid drive, and we found that is much more resistant uh, to damage after a crash. And, I think all production machinists know we're counting our time down till the next one. I mean, <laughs> we can make that longer, but That's uh, right. the hourglass it is ticking at all at times. Time, yes. <laughs> so the spindle on this, the standard spindle is our 7,500 RPM, 10, uh, sorry, 7,500 RPM, 50 taper, of course. Yep, 30 horsepower standard with gearbox. Right. So you still actually have uh, a lot of torque and power from even the 30 horse. Uh, or we have the optional uh, 10,000 RPM upgrade and 60 horsepower upgrade. Yeah, if, if, you're doing, if you're doing crazy aluminum high-speed hogging or something, yeah. you're going to probably step up to those and just 
you'd be filling this thing up like that. Yep, even with this spindle, I've filled up a chip bin pretty darn quick, and you'll see it throw and some chips. And that's with steel, not even aluminum, of course. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're moving. So, stand, some of the other standard stuff is the coolant, standard 95 gallon coolant tank, of course, right? Yep. Um, um, it's got the same kind of features as we were talking about on the VC400 and the EC400. Yep. Centralized uh, chip chip evacuation and out to the back. Yep, better chip evacuation and uh, just all the updates with the new EC casting design, which uh, has a lot better rib structure and uh, the better chip flow, like you're saying. So you get all those same benefits with this machine as well. So speaking of rigidity, maybe we should uh, fire this thing up. And see yeah, what we certainly. Got. So uh, if we're going here, you see we got a, a nice sized block of steel in there. We got some uh, Haas tooling in there as well. If uh, you're not, haven't looked at HaasTooling.com yet, please check that out. Yeah, check that out. So we've got an, a an action cam inside here that, that Frank will cut to now and then, but uh, Sal, I think you probably also want to get in there and look through the window as well. Yeah, so uh, we'll do a little facing pass here, go around the outside real quick, and then I program some real aggressive slots with the uh, Haas one-inch uh, steel end mill, and uh, we're gonna do a one-inch cutter, one-inch deep, full slotting, and uh, she purrs beautifully. Taking a hundred thou off the top here, just to maybe represent a slightly uneven uh, right. saw cut or something like that. So is this hostile tool holder and end mill? Yeah. Okay. Pull yeah, we probably a pull stud as well. Yeah. <laughs> It's easy to kit. order, so uh, that's, right. <laughs> that's one advantage to uh, having the tools in house. That's right. But uh, I was really impressed with how the the cutter cut. Uh, you'll see if you glance at the spindle load when we go to uh, the full slot. I program that up to about 120% spindle load, and actually you could run like that all day. You can do 15 minutes at 150% spindle load on our machines. So. Uh, 120% is an all-day sort of cut, and right. you'll see those chips fly. It makes a short work of this if block. You're, yeah, if you're at 100, if you're 150 percent for 15 minutes, that's a that's a boatload of chips right there. That's an impressive, that's an impressive program. I was going to actually ask the YouTube people uh, if you've ever gotten an alarm for running 150 percent for more than 15 minutes. I'd love to know what that is because it your cutter inherently comes out of the cut sometimes. Yeah. So yeah. I want to know how big of a block you have to. Yeah have that kind of engagement for yeah, that Yeah, you're doing long. a lot, it's a, yeah, a very heavy roughing cut for a long, long time on a, it's gotta be a big piece of material. Yeah. There we go. All right, so we're coming over to do the slot here. This will throw, if you wanna uh, get in there, Sal, it'll throw some nice chips right at the window there. You're probably gonna destroy my action cam in there, I suppose. Oh, uh, we just, got it out of the way. Just below it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Don't have to buy I'm a new sorry, camera, what's Andrew. A, what's a, so this What's is a cam? one inch wide, one inch deep, uh, 575 surface feet, uh, five thou per flute chip load. Uh, and I think I could actually push it harder. Uh, obviously being live, don't want to blow up any tools, but uh, if I was trying to make money off this demo, my guess is I could go 10, 20% higher without any problems long term. I can smell the steel right now. Yep, we got a, <laughs> it's 1018, so it's kind of mild, medium steel. Right. And that can potentially be as difficult to cut as a harder one, right? In terms of, you've got here you've got a high gumminess factor potentially. Yeah, the gumminess, particularly for drilling and uh, any operation that's sensitive to galling or kind of b b uh, binding up in the flutes. Right, right. It can actually be a... Uh, I know that just having having watched and, and videoed a lot of the, the Haas tooling uh, test cuts that we were doing, oftentimes you have more difficulty with these gummy materials, even though they're softer, you know, some of the some of the hard, harder steels are much cleaner cutting. 4140 is one of those. I'll yeah. take pre-hard any day. It's so right. much easier at 30, 35 Rockwell than right. the gummy 20s crap. Right. Yeah. So how far are we through here? You're still slotting, right? Let's see a rough vertical slot. Left. We're uh, getting pretty close to the end here. I put uh, six nice slots in there. I'll do a little chamfer pass, clean it all up. Then uh, maybe we'll do a pallet change and bring it over here. Oh, can cool. Ch Perfect. Check it Sounds out. Good. So that's, a, of course, it must, it's obviously a carbide 
uh, coated end mill of some sort, right? What yeah. What coating you have on this one? Yeah, it's a solid carbide end mill with an ALTIN coating for additional heat resistance and uh, just longer, uh, longer life and higher speed capabilities. Cool. Somebody right. in the earlier uh, stream was asking if you can cut stainless steel on our machines. Absolutely. Uh, there's very few materials you can't cut. Yeah. Uh, you get into the, some of the strange exotics, you know, you might have to add some extra protection for a lot of the Ceramics abrasive. Ceramics and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. There are certain things that can destroy your weight cover seals and other stuff like that, so. Yeah. But uh, you're that, really not limited to any particular materials. Uh, yeah, metallically speaking, you're, you're good. You should be good to go yeah. on anything. That's mostly just uh, tool path, well, getting the correct tooling and tool path, and you can cut pretty much anything. Right, right. Cool, so you want to do a pallet change? We'll take a look at that part. Is it Yeah, it's done just or? about done here. Give it a, oh, it's doing the chamfering? Yeah, 30 more seconds. All right, all right. My, uh, my machining instructor said never give him a part that he can cut himself on or he fails you on the spot, and I've carried that through my whole career. That's so. great. Then you should be making demos for us to shoot, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting there. Oh. Maybe not just slotting, but yeah. Yeah. yeah you don't want to get to a, to, a, to a machine and shoot the demo and realize it's got some chips hanging off it or something at the end of it. Come on. Yeah, nothing worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we should be just about done. Actually, why don't you zoom in there, uh, Sal? You can see it on the pallet in the machine there, if you get a good view of that. So rather than do some pocketing on this, I mean, when you do the uh, low radial engagement tricordial tool paths, you're actually reducing a lot of the tool pressure. And yeah, they look real cool, but that's actually not a terribly difficult cut to do well. A full depth, like a one times diameter slot like this is actually doing, uh, testing the machine a lot more in terms of rigidity and horsepower and uh, if you got anything wrong, you're gonna find it out on your first slot. Right, right. Sounds good to me. And you can see the pile of chips down there. I mean, we, uh, so if you can uh, kind of scroll down into the chip pan there, you can see this machine uh, just cranks out those chips. Like you, like you said, if you're ready to make money, this is the kind of machine you want to do it with. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, cool. yeah, this, I... is a, this is a money maker. If you got bigger parts or need a slightly larger pallet size, uh, or and all in that same smaller footprint. Yeah. Yeah, so if you've got, maybe you've got a little bit of a tight space to try to fit this style of machine into, this may be the one if you're really looking to do some heavy cutting. Yeah. So I think that kind of sums it up for what we've got for the EC500, right, Marcus? Yeah, and if you look, right. uh, these chips are still a little toasty. I don't know if you can get a good look <laughs> at them, but uh, oh, some serious chips there. Nice well, and blue. Well, they're pretty hot. You're gonna burn through your paper there in a second. I actually feel it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are coming off hot. Cool. Well. I think we're done with this machine. Brian, you want to step back in?